In this Scanner Guys video, we're going to show you how to operate ARCXT. In order to import things from Radio Reference, we go up to the Internet tab, which is right here, and then click on Radio Reference. Then this dialog box pops up on your screen. If you haven't already, enter in your Radio Reference username and password. You must be a paid member of Radio Reference in order to be able to take advantage of the import feature. Once you've entered in your password and your username, you can hit connect. Then you can decide what state you want to import in. Today, we're going to import in some stuff in Maine. Today, we're going to take a look at the Portland, Maine trunking system, which is in Cumberland County. So I'll select Cumberland County. And then I will select trunking systems. Once I've selected trunking systems, I will then look for that trunking system that I'm looking for, which is for the city right here, Portland P25 trunking system. It'll take a moment to load. Once this information is loaded, you will select the site or sites that you're looking to import in. Since this is a city system, we will just select the one site. This is key. You must select a site on this side of the screen. And then on the right side of the screen, we need to select what talk groups we want to import in. Today, we're just importing in the police and the fire and public works. Once this is done, I will then press import. As you can see on the main screen over there on the left, it is imported in the trunking system. Since I'm in the import tool, I'm gonna import in some conventional channels as well. So we will select conventional. I will open the plus sign here and then choose the cities and towns that I wanna import in. Once I've selected the cities and towns I want to import in, I will then hit import. Typically when I'm doing this with conventional uh, items, I try not to import in more than 10 different groupings. In this case, you know, 10 different cities or towns, just keep it under 10. And then I would make another Cumberland County list with an additional 10 if it was a larger county. Now that I'm done with importing in some trunking and conventional, I will click the X over here. Next, I will hit the plus sign. Under the trunking system, we would not only see the talk group groupings, which are right here under police, public works, and fire, if we open this plus sign here, we will see the simulcast trunking system here. Click here and you'll be able to see the frequencies that are the control channels and their alternates. Taking a look at this system, we can actually uh, add GPS data to this particular um, group of frequencies if we're using this in a vehicle with a GPS receiver. Typically, the database will import in GPS data when it's available. Clicking open this dialog box, we will see that there's no GPS data listed. So we need to add this in. So what we will do is do a GPS search. Once this dialog box opens, we can type in the name of the town and the state in here, 
and do a GPS find. What it will do is it'll find the latitude longitude center point for the city. It looks to be displayed down here. We can then do a range of six miles. So once you enter into this community, these channels will be able to be monitored. What I will then do is hit copy GPS. And then we will close this dialog box. So now that I have those GPS coordinates in the clipboard, I will hit paste and then OK. Now that is stored under the police talk groups. I believe the same thing will need to be done for the highway department talk groups as well. Once the dialog box has popped open, we can see that there's no our GPS coordinates here. Since I still have the GPS data that I found through the GPS search, I can just paste it right in here since it's already in the clipboard. I can hit OK here. And we'll do this probably one more time for the fire if nothing is listed there for GPS data. It appears that there isn't any GPS data listed here. Since that GPS coordinates are still in my clipboard, I can just hit paste and then hit OK. Now I have GPS um, information on both the police, the fire, and the public works. Let me check the site to see if it has any GPS coordinates. We will go down here where it shows edit GPS data. It appears that we do have GPS data here. So I can just click OK. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that we've imported in for conventional channels for Cumberland County. We can see a whole slew of towns here, probably about six of them. And we can actually set group quick keys to each one of these. If you use quick keys, it's super simple to do it in the software. First, we will set a system quick key for the actual system. We will go over here where it shows quick key. We can choose anywhere from 1 to 99. In this case, we're going to choose 1. Under each group, we can select a quick key. We'll make Freeport number 1. And we will continue to assign quick keys to each individual group. As you can see here, it defaults to quick key number one for each group. Any of these alpha tags can be edited within a group. As you can see here, all the frequencies are listed, alpha tags, PL tone, mode, and what type of signal, whether it's analog, digital, or just receive all. For example, if we wanted to type in Yarmouth Fire, we could type it out fully here as long as it supports uh, the number of characters on that particular scanner. We can set quick keys to a trunking system as well. Going up here, we would set a quick key to the system on the actual site. You'll then click over here. Since we've already set Cumberland to quick key one, we will set the trunking system to quick key two. 
Now, the same thing for the groupings for the talk groups. For groups, we will do the police as quick key one, buyer as quick key two, and the public works is quick key three. Now that we've completed our programming, now we want to save this file locally to our computer hard drive. Let's do that right now. We're going to go under File, and then we're going to Save Profile As. That'll save everything in this profile. We're going to call this file Portland. OK, now the file is saved to our computer. So now what we need to do is we need to write this to the scanner. We are connecting up to a 996P2, so I'm going to program the scanner. There's nothing inside of the scanner. So in order to write to the scanner, we first need to go to Scanner, and then we'll go to Communication Setup. Under Communication Setup, we're going to find out what COM port our cable is connected to through our computer. I've already connected up the PC cable in the front of the scanner over to the USB jack on my computer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Auto Detect Scanner. This will take a few moments. It looks like we've successfully detected the scanner, which is great. So we'll now hit OK. And it looks like it's COM port 7 for communication in between the scanner and the computer. I'll just hit the X here. And now we're able to write this information to the scanner. So we will go to the Scanner tab, and we will select Upload to Scanner. We will then select Send All Systems. And we will leave all these options blank. If you wanted to delete all systems inside the scanner first, you, of course, uh, do a check mark there. If you've already had these systems programmed in your scanner and you've done some edits, you could select Overwrite Systems with same name. And, of course, um, you can uh, send system quick key statuses to the scanner. So let's say if you had a few things that were turned on and off, um, within the programming. What we're basically going to do is we're going to send everything that we programmed in on the computer to the scanner. I'm going to press the green button now. It'll take a few moments to send this programming to the 996P2. Now that the programming is complete on the scanner, and it looks like everything is scanning on there, I'm going to use the virtual control to show you how to turn on and off those quick keys. We actually took some time when we programmed in the Portland trunk system in those cities and towns within Cumberland with quick keys. I'm going to show you how to turn those on and off. We're going to use the virtual control on the ARC XT Pro in order to demonstrate this. So I'm going to click on the virtual control here. As you can see here, it is currently scanning the two systems. We need to pay close attention towards the bottom of the scanner screen. We can see systems one and two scanning back and forth. And of course, we could see groups down below alternating in between the two systems. For example, if we wanted to turn off the Portland trunk system, which we have programmed into quick key number two for the system, I would just press the number two. Now you see on the screen, there's a star where there was a number two on the system line. That means that this system is turned off. We can see under the system one, it's scanning six groups. Let's say, for example, if we wanted to turn off one of the groups in system number one, let's say number two, we would basically press on the radio the function button and then the corresponding number. This case would be number two. 
you'll see down below on the group line that number one is still on, number two is off, and all the numbers up to number six are still on. In order to turn this group back on again, we would then hit the function button on the scanner and then the number two. That would then restore group number two. If we want to continue scanning the trunk system, which is currently off in system two, we would just press the number two. So now we're back scanning systems one and two. Let's say by accident you've turned off system one and system two, it will indicate on the screen nothing to scan. We know that we have stuff programmed into the scanner because on the system line, we can see a star where the one and two would normally be displayed. We can just turn those on just by clicking on the, on the, on the number pad, number one and number two. Now we have successfully programmed our 996P2 with the ARC-XT software from Utel.